So I've always wondered if drone blades would cut webbing if a drone crashed into a high line. So Matthias is willing to sacrifice one of his drones today for us to test if a drone or a webbing wins for science. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Matthias. I fly drones like this around people all the time, highlining, and uh, I want to see what the actual effect of a propeller hitting the line is. Not cutting it. <laughs> uh, explain to us this webbing. This looks like some high quality truck strap material right here. <laughs> it's the shittiest webbing we could find. If this doesn't break, uh, yeah, I, I don't think a normal webbing would. But if they, this does break, that's some interesting results. You build these yourself, yourself, I take it? Yes, this is a competitive race drone. So it's built to be as fast as possible and as light as possible. Okay. It's not the typical rig I film with. But yeah. you're... Because the other one is a little dialed down to make smooth footage. However, this one is as, as aggressive as they come. So also, if this can cannot cut it, the film ones will not be able to cut it. So you're not afraid of hurting this thing? Hurting the drone? Yeah. No, no, no. I'm fully capable of repairing it. <laughs> Whatever breaks, I will repair. So you say it's going to hit like that, because that's the way you fly it. Yeah. Okay. Because this is my visual okay. reference. Um, and the blades are spinning like this. Okay. So I don't know if they actually will get caught or if you just bounce off. Huh. Well, we'll find out. The, the next thing I could try is like go at an angle. Then we have four blades that could strike it. So we need to play in it multiple times. All right, <laughs> or I guess we're flying in an angle, let's turn it on. Throttle warning. Switch warning. Okay, you ready? <laughs> Holy shit! That was sick! It that's, that's launched it. it straight up. Yeah. See anything on the web? Uh, I'm so curious about this guy. No damage. No damage. Not even a bent propeller. I hit it here. It's quite hard to tell for me. This is looking just fine. Oh, you can see, are those burn marks? I don't know. No, I think that was one. Before. Yeah, okay. Webbing one, drone zero. <laughs> I think we need more tension on it. Okay. Ruben. <laughs> Should I go and get a pulley? You're the, no, it's either you or me have to stand on this. We just added one uh, kilo Ruben on this webbing. So we actually have tension and it doesn't flap around. Uh, you got enough padding? <laughs> yeah, it's good. Okay. <laughs> Are you excited? <laughs> nervous. You're nervous? For Ruben, not uh, for the drone or the light. I don't see any damage. We sacrifice the tenna, but actually, it just sticks back in. <laughs> Batteries. Okay, the battery got a bit ejected, but I don't know if that was from the impact on the ground or impact on the line. So, do you think you would be in any situation that this would cut a high line? I still haven't seen that happening. And what if you had like the different blades that aren't just plastic, but what's that other material? Other material? Is it Kevlar? No. Carbon? Yeah, carbon fiber blades. They don't make carbon fiber blades. They do make less reinforced plastic blades, but they're actually more fragile or more brittle. Gotcha. So the, these are the normal plastic that you would use now in FPV. I think it's polycarbonate. Uh, previously, they used good glass fiber reinforced poly, and those would be more stiff. Like these have a lot of flex in them. Gotcha. Uh, so actually, the glass fiber reinforced, I don't know if they would cut it more easily or damage. But um, yeah, I don't see these. These chip off and break before they would break something else. So just don't tape razor blades to the end of them and you'll be fine? No, unless you want adventure. <laughs> unless you want, you want an adventure? <laughs> I still have one more test to do, right? Oh, what's that? Instead, we just hold it like a chainsaw to the webbing. 
I'm down. This is one of the world record holders of La Putin. The Rubinator. Yeah, I can see her. Like how solid I am. On the line. Wow, you have practiced a lot. Yeah, you have practiced super short lines a lot. Oh, that's just awful sounding. How, how does that make you feel, Ruben? On one side, I'm happy that it's a break though. <laughs> that means we have been safe all the time. Yeah, the propeller did chop off the ends. Mm. So, like, okay. they're not nice and round anymore. They are oh. starting to puncture. Okay, so it did nothing. It did nothing to this cheap, cheap, cheap thin webbing. It did fluff it. Yeah. But also, this is the sharp side of the, the blade that will never... And you held it on there. Yeah. Uh, it's a, no scenario ever. So on a high line, we have a main and a backup. So even if you the drone was to, in the unlikely event that we've just proven with thorough science, cuts one of the webbings, you still technically have another webbing. I don't see how this would cut both of them. But it does make me feel better that this isn't just razor blades flying through the sky. Have you ever hit anybody? Myself? Yes. <laughs> just yourself. Okay. Um, this is not something I would want to hit me. Uh, and Matthias flies very aggressively around everybody eyelining. But he got some really cool shots of the La Portum project we we're just coming back from. And you can check that out. We're going to make a whole trilogy on this channel about that. It's on Swedish TV and there's all sorts of stuff coming out. So I'll put that in the description below. But uh, if you have any more drone theories that we could test. Maybe Matthias can uh, uh, collaborate with us. He lives in Sweden, but the internet works around the world. So <laughs> maybe we can do another test in the future. Let me know. Thanks for watching. Cheers.